Welcome to Ask the Expert on AKC TV, where we bring you the top experts on dog health, training, grooming, and so much more. So you ask it and we will answer it. I'm Marissa Sarbag. Thank you so much for joining us today. In today's topic, it is snowing, it's raining, it is winter. So how do we keep our dogs looking their best when it is cold and wet? Now for those answers, we are going to turn it over to our AKC grooming expert, Susan Scholler. Susan has been a groomer of pets and show dogs for over 45 years. And we also have on Coda the Siberian Husky and Teddy the Miniature Poodle as our dog guest today. So if this is your first time watching the show, sending us your questions is very simple. Just go to facebook.com slash American Kennel Club and comment on this video. Susan can answer any and all of those grooming questions, so do not be shy. We are all here to help. Susan, we are so excited to have you on the show with us today. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So we're going to have those demonstrations in just a little bit. Very excited to get to those. But first, I want to talk about a myth that I think a lot of dog owners think of here. It's wintertime. They think, I want to keep my dog's coat long. I don't have to groom. What would you say? That's a fallacy mm -hmm. these days. We, as the pet owners in the modern day pet world, have made them part of our family, a very intricate part of our family and they live within our homes. And with that change of climate that they used to get outside, they're not getting with us because inside we have climate control every day. And we also have the lights on most of the day and well into the night. So they lose that uh, control of not shedding, putting on a nice thick coat in the winter time. So you're going to have shedding almost all year round. So that's really a misconception because people think in the winter, my dog doesn't shed. That's why they would assume, I guess, they don't have to groom. That's true. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about the different types of coats that we're going to see and what you'll deal with in the winter with each of those different types of coats. Well, with your double-coated dogs, like your Siberian Husky that we have here today, and Chow Chows and the Collies, they have a, a standoffish double coat, and the undercoat in the summertime will start coming out. You can see it clump out. Well, now we're also having it in the winter. And if the owner is wise, if they do regular combing, regular maintenance of that coat, they will keep the shedding in their house down considerably. And talk to us about other types of dogs out there in those coats. The most common you'll see is the poodle with that textured coat. It doesn't fall out all over, but it does get tangled very easily. And if you're not brushing them thoroughly, then they are going to get very tangled to the point that when you are ready to take that coat down, you're not going to have any choice. It's going to have to be taken very short. So you want to brush them regularly to keep those mats from getting tangled up in the dog. Any types of tips you would give to owners who are, you know, maybe thinking about now taking care of that coat during the winter? Well, yes. Um, can I demonstrate over here? We would love that. Yeah. Teddy is ready for you and Deborah. Teddy. <laughs> So Susan is going to head over and give a demonstration here with Teddy, the miniature poodle. And Deborah was kind enough to bring him on for us. Thank you guys both for being here. Thank you for having us. Hello, Teddy. Hi, Susan. Okay. Are you ready to start? You're, this is going to be your at least weekly, if not more, uh, tradition now in grooming your dog. But I like to start at the top and do what I call line brushing and I'll brush a line there of the hair, and then once that's done, I'll move my hand down a little bit, and I'll grab another line of hair and brush that out. And what that does is that enables you to make sure that you've cleared out all the mats. See how smoothly that, great. that goes through that? And then it takes a little bit more time, but if you do it regularly, it's not that much time, and it will save you a lot of trouble, and it'll save you the coat so that when it's time for the dog to be groomed, you'll have the coat there to have in the pattern that you would like to have and the length that you would like to have. Um, a lot of times owners like to scissor their dogs a little bit, get that, maintain that length down when it's winter. So you can do that, but I have a precaution here. And when you brush that up, you can just touch it up. A lot of owners will go through and they'll start cutting dogs' hairs and they don't think about what's under that hair. And poodles have a lot of coat. So what we wanna do is take a comb through 
And then I, anytime you're gonna shorten the hair on the leather of the ear, I recommend you hold that hair down, run that comb down so that you put it down, you know that the leather of the ear is at that point. So you don't accidentally get up there and cut the skin. And let me give you warning on that cutting the skin. Once you've cut the skin and go, oh, I better take it to the groomer, it's too late. That's when it has to go to the veterinarian. Because if we were to bathe it, we could contaminate, contaminate that area. And you don't want to have an infection started there because you accidentally cut it. So um, that's how we do that. And see how nice she keeps this dog anyway. And we're able to take that comb and go all through it. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is da -da, the dog's favorite. <laughs> For the little guys, you can use the small nail clippers. And I'll pull, push that hair back a little. Now, he gets done regularly, obviously, because his nails are not real long. And he may also walk on concrete a lot. When they're walking on asphalt or concrete, they will keep them down some. When they're as short as they are, as his are, I will often just go straight to the Dremel, the grinder here, and now hold on, little guy. <laughs> yeah, it's my boy. You know, and I'm one of those groomers that I kind of get a feel for what the dog likes, whether I'm cleaning ears or doing the nails. And if they don't mind the nail clipper and that's what they want, that's what I'll do. But if they some pref actually prefer the grinder, <laughs> and I will, and I'll use that then. But you can get almost any dog used to it. Okay. Um, and if you do, you do poodle feet yourself, or do you take him to the groomer regularly? The groomer. That's a good idea. <laughs> Poodles have these webbed feet, and if you don't know how to do it, you can accidentally cut the webbing of that feet. Uh, the feet. So um, take them to the groomer regularly. A lot of people do take them fortunately in the winter time. It's necessary to get it done that way. If you can't get to the groomer because the weather is so bad, please take a comb and a brush and maintain that dog's coat the, so that it's in good condition when the time comes that you can get to the groomer. Thank you. Okay. Great now advice. Susan, is there anything um, that you, else that you'd want to show us here with Teddy or use the towel for? Well, if you're taking Teddy out for a walk, you, I recommend that you keep a towel at your door. Because every time I take my dogs out for a walk, whether it's water or snow, I come back in and they're going to track water and snow all through my house. So I'll come in here and I'll start drying these feet, each one of them. And if the coat's long under here, under the brisket chest area here, then you're gonna also wanna be drying that. And once you get that dried with the towel dryer, with the towel, you need to go over those feet because whenever the coat like this gets wet, it'll start matting up. So after, at least at the end of the day, if you haven't done it when they come in, at the end of the day, go through and do a good brushing around those areas that got wet when he was outside. All right, thank you, Susan. And we do also have Coda, the Siberian Husky, waiting for you for our second demonstration. I just want to remind everybody as well, while Susan is making her way over to Coda, that we are taking questions live on Facebook. So we're very excited to have you ask those questions. Susan has been doing this for a long time, so she can help with questions for your pets, show dogs, any grooming questions that you have, comment those on the American Kennel Club Facebook off. video right now. We are doing this live. All right, Susan, how's it going over there with Coda? Okay. Now you're getting set up. Coda we have up here. Let's put a loop on him. Hello, Coda. You got a beautiful coat. <laughs> Oops, excuse. And Susan, we actually do have our first Facebook question in while you're getting set up with Coda there. Okay. Nancy says, do you believe in shaving down double Coda dogs like Huskies, like Coda, Shepherds, etc.? I hate doing it. No, I don't. I will try to talk an owner out of it whenever I can. One big clue though is in shaving them. If, you're, if the owner's shaving them themselves, don't go against the grain. You really do a lot of damage to the air follicle when you do that. And you shouldn't take them super close, even if you're gonna do it at all. I've had a couple of cases where owners were going through cancer treatment and the, the doctors required it. 
So in those cases, you can't argue at all. That's a medical issue. But it's not my preference at all. all right, Besides, why would you want to take this beautiful coat <laughs> off? Yes, thank so. you to Coda and Samantha for joining us on set today. So here again, we're going to do the, the line brushing through so that we get all this undercoat out here. Undercoat that stays in there, it's really soft and it will mat just like the poodle. It just doesn't seem to do it as quick. But if you get around this dog and do that all over their body, you can use a slicker brush or that. But then when you get back to the, what I call the pants of the dog, um, it's much longer. So you then you can hold that hair up and start brushing down with it. Be still, be still. And Susan, we, we can tell, you know, not every dog loves to be groomed. It's not their favorite <laughs> thing in the world. How do you often deal with dogs if they get a little bit anxious during the process? Well, if you work with them regularly and give them treats when they're doing it good mm -hmm. so that they realize this is a positive reinforcement. If I'm still for a few minutes, I'll get a treat. <laughs> and then you let those minutes get longer and longer apart while you're doing the training. Okay. When you have a coat like this, if you don't brush through this thoroughly, it will get very matted. So you need to be either slicker brushing it or combing it. And look how much we're already getting out mm -hmm. of them with just a few rakes of coat. And when you can start fluffing it up like that and not catching it, oh, hold up, oh my goodness <laughs> sakes. When you can do that, then you know you've got that pretty well done. You can line brush a tail too, but it's gonna take a little bit of working with him. I'd suggest that you start working on doing both of those yeah. now, because um, he does have a lot of coat oh, yeah. in, in his tail and his pants area. Um, Coda, can you stand up, big guy? Up, up, come on. Another thing with these guys, I'm not sure if the camera can catch it, but we have a lot of hair here on the pads of this dog. And you can see there, I can actually pick it up and hold it. Not that he likes it, but I can. Oh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so I turn it up and I'll take, I can take scissors or I can take a clipper and just shave those out. And I like to do that because if I don't, um, you didn't do that, the, the slicker comb did. If I don't do that, then when they're in the house and they're playing and you have hard floors, they tend to slide on those floors when they have all that hair under there. So if you take it off, they can get a little more grip and not run into the walls. Um, so if you don't have a clipper, which most of you don't, and I will tell you, groomers save you a lot of money in the long run. These, this equipment is expensive equipment, and we have a number of different blades on them. But for these guys, you really don't need a clipper at all. Good comb, good slicker brush, pair of scissors, they don't have to be this big, and then you can just pull that pad up and scissor right edge with the edge of the pad and take it easy on them, because if you accidentally nick them, that pad's cut and it takes longer to heal because they're always walking on it. So you want to be very, very careful on that. Then the other thing is to, so that they're not getting their feet quite as wet and in the snow, let me put those down. You're catching on too quick. <laughs> You're getting too smart. Stop. Yes, sir. So I brush that up and then I can take my scissors and I just want to even them off to the pad part so that he's not picking up as much snow and getting that foot just really soaked with the hair. Okay, so I would do it on all four feet. The back feet, I warn you, if you're doing scissors, don't stand right behind dogs. Uh, they, some of them can have very ticklish feet and they'll just automatically kick back like a horse and those scissors can go right in your yeah. face. Safety reason for you, be very careful. So, okay. So that's what I like to get done on these guys is comb those, the coat out very thoroughly. Do the nails. Let's see how he is with nails. 
Now with him, I would use the same type of nail clipper, but I use a larger one. And I am guessing his are very, fairly short too, they are. So you can take, don't do that. You can take it just like this, hold that hair back, just like I did on Teddy, and then just tip off, he doesn't have much there. You only need to tip off the very tip of the nail. You can also try to use the grinder and see if he likes that better. Let's try that on him. You think he's gonna like it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think this would be a great time to ask our next Facebook question. Also, Susan, while you're working on okay. that, Becky says, my pug does not like her nails trimmed. How do you get them to like it? Pugs are the worst. <laughs> they are the worst about it. Stop. Um, with pugs, see, you can just. Yeah, very easy. Yeah, and he doesn't mind that too much. These are not expensive. So if you get them and try them, um, then you should be able to get him used to getting yeah. those nails done like that. Uh -huh. But if you can't, use your nail clippers uh -huh. and get them to settle down. Treats, praise, and you should be able to get it done real good. All right. Okay? So on the pug, um, I will tell you, I've, I've had a number of pugs that we'll have it, you come right back over here that it takes season. two people mm -hmm. to do those nails. They just fight it dramatically. And since it is a brachial cephalic skull dog, meaning the short-nosed dog with the round head, you don't want to put them in a compromising position, position that could damage um, their eyes or anything. All right. So if I need two people, I'll call somebody else. Thank you very much. And thank you to Coda and Teddy. You guys were great. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be done with the grooming segment. I guess they are. All right. Well, Susan, so uh, to continue on about those certain dogs. So you're saying pugs oftentimes don't like the, the grooming or the nail trimming. They don't like the nail trimming at all. I've never found one that did. Have you found that to be with a, true with a lot of breeds? Is it a breed specific thing? Well, no, almost all dogs don't like it. Some of them get used to it pretty well. I used to have a pit bull that came into my salon and he would go get on a table and hand me his paws. <laughs> so you just never know for mm -hmm. sure. You just check to see what each one's like. But I will tell you, I've never found a pug that liked to have their nails done. She Sus aren't bad about it and the other toy breeds aren't about, bad about it. But I guess it can depend on personality, too, for each dog. It can. All right. And pugs shed a lot. Mm -hmm. So they, they need to come see they more. Need, <laughs> they need a combing every day, or you're going to have a lot of hair in your salon, in your home. And so, Susan, talk to us a little bit about the products that are out there that maybe people can buy that would help them with this type of grooming. Well, we have, um, there's now out there a, a conditioner that you don't rinse off and it works very well. It's, um, can I mention the company? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Zymox, it's made by Zymox, and I, I happen to use it, which is why I know this. Um, and I was hesitant when I got it because I always want to rinse everything out. But it doesn't affect their skin, it does great on their coat, and it helps keep it where you can keep the, comb, the coat combed out better. So there probably are a few things that you can do on your own and then there are certain things that you really need to see a professional groomer for. The true, very much so. Okay. Our next Facebook question is in from Denise. She says, how do I repair my Afghan hound's coat that has been damaged by being outside in the weather? Lots of mud and rain. Great for this time of year question. Use uh, Denise, a good conditioner. There is one, it's a keratin and I use it in my shower. <laughs> It works for people on dogs? It works for people. <laughs> well, it works for me. But, um, and it's made by El Ar Arto, or I can't remember the name. But it's in a, it looks, it's pink. It's in a pink jar. Um, you can go to almost any pet supply and probably find it. If you, especially if you go to one of the higher end uh, salons, pet stores, you, you can get it there. And, but just get a good conditioner to help you get through that and can get that condition back in that coat. How often should she be doing that conditioning the coat? Well, you don't want to do overdo a dog with a coat like an Afghan. So if she were to do that every two weeks to every four weeks, she should be okay. And get some of that health back in that coat. And talking about timing, how often should somebody be bringing their dog to a professional groomer? And does that vary based on the breed? They should be bringing them in on a six to eight week basis, and it does depend on the breed. Poodles, Bichons, dogs like that should be brought in definitely on a six to eight week basis. 
one of the biggest problems we have in the grooming salons is owners get new puppies and they don't bother to take them in until they're six months. By the time a puppy is six months, they're developing that fear factor in them. So if you start them really young, you don't even have to take them in as young because they don't need as much, but then they get used to the process. And by the time most dogs would be at that stubborn fear stage <laughs> six months on, you've already got that dog settled into it and almost any groomer should be able to get them done. So really it's just positive reinforcement. Positive You're teaching them young and, and they get used to it. Yeah, All right, and you. find a good groomer. Find an AKC safety groomer. Absolutely, thanks Susan. You're Is welcome. there anything else that anybody should be aware of before we let you go for the day? Well, I oh, can't think of it. We are actually getting some Facebook questions in now. Oh, we are? Yes. Uh, Sierra says, how easy or challenging is it for pet owners wanting to learn how to hand strip? Anything to know <laughs> or be careful about? I really, have an, I really want to have an Irish Terrier, but I don't know anything at all about keeping up with a hand stripped coat. No prior grooming experience otherwise. A wonderful Terrier breed to have. It is a lot of work. There is definitely a technique to it. Um, if you want, if you, I gather that she does not have one yet. If you get one, you can start very simply by going and getting a pumice stone. But the trick is make sure you're not flipping your wrist when you're pulling those hairs out. And don't grab a whole bunch of hair. What we're basically doing when we hand strip is we're pulling dead hair out because terriers don't shed. In the old days when they're out working the fields, they run through all the briars and everything, and that would pull that coat out. And we're not doing that now. They're living in the house with us, and that coat stays there, and it can cause skin issues with the dogs. So if you take a pumice and just pull, you know, every couple of weeks, about a third of the coat, and brush it up so you can see which are the longest ones, those are the ones you're gonna pull out. Then the next, we generally have like three different links when we're doing this on terriers. Is there anything it's else? It's wonderful, but yeah. it's hard. Is there anything else she should know before getting that terrier? I would go to um, the AKC Breeder Marketplace and find a good groomer that does all the DNA testing. You want to start out with a good, healthy dog. And then also you want to see the parents. If you're looking for that nice terrier coat that you want to hand strip, those parents need to both have that coat as well. Great. Allison has our next question. She says, how often should my dog have her nails trimmed? That can depend on the dog and your living situation. If you walk your dog regularly on asphalt or concrete, chances are you won't need to do it, but like once a month. Um, if you don't, and they're just house dogs on carpet, you are likely to have to have those nails clipped every two weeks, sometimes even every week. But listen to the, if they're on the floor, if you hear the, the ticking of those nails going across your floor, you know it's time to get those nails clipped. And this is something that you could do on your own? Oh, yes, you can. Okay. And people shouldn't be fearful of it. They come in and the nails will be extremely long. And they say, well, I was afraid I'd get the quick. Well, let me tell you, there's probably not a vet or a groomer around that hasn't had the same issue. That's why we have Quick Stop or any of those clotting products out there that will stop the bleeding. The only thing that you want to make sure, there are a few breeds out there that have a Von Willebrand's disease, which is hemo like hemophilia in people. So I'm, I won't even do nails on those guys because if they start bleeding, I'm afraid that the, I just won't get it stopped. So, but you, fortunately, we don't see much of that anymore. Lynn has our next comment. She says, my Australian Shepherd mix has clumps falling out. Is that something <laughs> she should be taking care of? Yes, get that slicker brush and comb out today and, st <laughs> and start getting all those clumps out of there. If you don't, they're gonna get tangled up in the rest of the hair. And probably be all over your house. That way it will be, <laughs> yes. All right, waiting to see if we have any more questions coming in. I think that is it for us for now. Anything else? Oh, we have one more coming in right now, hold on. Bring it up on your screen in just a second. There we go. Cheryl says, how often should a Shih Tzu be bathed and groomed? Again, this will depend on how you wish to keep your Shih Tzu. I bred them and showed Shih Tzus. If you're keeping them in the full coat, you're gonna wanna be doing them like every week and use a good shampoo and use a good conditioner on them. If you're keeping them trimmed in a shorter trim, 
uh, then you have a little more time in between. You can go four weeks, six weeks. Uh, just make sure that you get them into the groomer before those hairs. If you're having the face trimmed, you don't want to wait too long because when those little hairs grow around the eye, they can scratch the cornea of the eye and then you will have a dog with an infected eye. I tell people, decide what you want. If you want the coat long or if you want just the face long, that's okay as well. But don't do the trimming in here. If you're gonna get it trimmed, make sure that you come in more often. Athena has our next question. She says, how often should she get her Chihuahua and Blue Healer groomed? What a combination. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, that's gonna depend on you. Both those dogs are easy maintenance dogs. Uh, so uh, the healer is more likely to be very active and want to be outside and playing and getting dirt on them and everything. Chihuahuas, they can be active, but they don't necessarily want to put their feet out in water or mud. So if you're keeping a dog that's fairly clean, you don't have to wor worry about, um, uh, you know, a lot of heavy grooming multiple times. I usually see healers and chihuahuas like every two to three months. And Deborah has our next question. She says, my 10 year old purebred miniature poodle had a seizure, now has balding spots on his coat. Is this normal with age? Seizures are not necessarily normal in any dog in my opinion, but we do unfortunately see it in a lot of breeds. I have not seen it in miniature poodles yet. Mm -hmm. And if it's getting spots on its coat, on its skin and losing coat in those areas, I would definitely recommend that you go to a veterinarian and you might find a specialist dermatology veterinarian to take them to to have that checked out. Kathy has our next question. She said, would you recommend a daily brush for a chow chow to use between professional grooming? At least every week. If you do a line brushing and you're good about it, um, you don't need to do it every day. But if you have the time to do it every day, it's quicker. You get it done in no time at all and it will be in very good condition for the next professional grooming. All right, thanks so much, Susan, okay. for your time today. Great to have you on set with us. Thank you, I enjoyed it. It was really fun. We loved having the Facebook <laughs> questions in too. That's always good. And having Teddy and Coda with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Marissa Sarbak, host of AKC TV's Ask the Expert. We are happy to have you with us. Next week on Ask the Expert, we will have AKC Chief Veterinary Officer, Dr. Jerry Klein on. He'll be talking with us about taking care of your dog's adorable ears. And that will be at the same time, Wednesday at noon, so get those questions ready. If you want updates on the world of dogs, tune into AKC Dog Center every Tuesday and Friday at noon. We will have the latest dog news from the American Kennel Club just for you. Be sure to download AKC TV on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. We have our content on demand. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. AKC TV, sit, stay, watch.